Hi class, I'm Dr. Scott Adamson, and this is the fifth in a series of videos designed to help you make sense of the idea of a limit. And this particular video is one that's going to set you up for a future video where we examine the derivative of trigonometric functions. But first, having some background on this particular limit will be very valuable to you in that future uh, understanding of derivative. So in this case, because we're using some trigonometric functions, the sine of an angle, I'm going to use the Greek letter theta rather than uh, an x or some other English letter to represent the input quantity. So can you imagine an input quantity being the, an angle measure, an angle measure getting closer and closer and closer to zero but not equal to zero? We want to examine if we input angle measures close to zero radians, then what would this function sine theta over theta, how would it behave? Let's start with just a little mental math here, a little mental analysis of what's happening. If this angle is really close to zero, the sine of an angle close to zero, you might recall that the sine measures that vertical distance. So if you rotate an angle and you think about the right triangle, that vertical side or that vertical leg of that triangle. Well, if the angle value is very small, very close to zero, that vertical leg is gonna be really close to zero. So as theta gets closer and closer to zero, the sine of theta gets closer and closer to zero. And then of course in the denominator, we just have theta, and if theta is closer to zero, then theta is closer to zero. So in this case, the numerator is just getting closer to zero, the denominator is getting closer to zero, zero over zero, indeterminate form, what's happening? I think we should go jump on some technology and examine this looking at a graph, looking at a table of values, and see if we can come to some understanding of what's happening here. So in examining the function sine x over x, or on paper we might write sine of theta divided by theta to kind of highlight that we're focused on angle measures, uh, the mental analysis of it shows that it's kind of hard to figure out what's happening. As that angle measure got smaller and smaller and smaller, the sine of that angle got smaller and smaller and smaller. And of course, denominator here is the angle measure, so as it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, the denominator gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So it's just really hard to know what's happening to the outputs of this function for input quantities that are nearby to zero. So we'll look at the graph, we'll look at a table of values and see if we can figure out what's happening. So here is a graph of the function in Desmos. We're going to use sine x over x for convenience. And we want to examine what's happening to this function for values of the input, the angle measure, or in this case the x values, that are nearby to zero. And if we zoom in to see what's happening for those values, the evidence is that the output values seem to be getting closer and closer to 1. So I can trace on this or drag the points on this and see for input quantities on the positive side of zero that are close to zero, look at that output quantity, 0.99999. Yes, it appears as though as, as the input gets closer to closer to zero, the output gets closer and closer to one. Now, of course, right at zero, we get the undefined phenomenon. Now let's move to the left side. What about on the negative side of zero? As our input gets closer to zero from the left side of zero, negative 0.001, let's say, we also see output values that are getting closer and closer to one. So the evidence is pretty strong visually that for angle measures nearby to zero, the output of sine of that angle divided by that angle is one. Now let's look at the table of values just to further confirm. Notice for input values of 0.01 and 0.001, the outputs are really, really close to 1. Likewise, on the negative side, negative 0.01 or negative 0.01, we have output values of 0.9999999. So again, keep in mind that I am not showing input values that are as close to zero as one could get theoretically. Like in your mind's eye, you could, you could allow the input quantity to be even closer to zero than what I'm showing here. But the evidence is pretty, pretty strong that for input values that are near to zero, the output values are nearby to one.
let's go back and see how are we going to record this result. So after examining the graph of the function sine theta over theta, after looking at a table of values, we see that the closer the angle measure gets to zero, the closer this function outputs the quantity one. And so we would say that the limit as theta approaches zero of sine theta over theta is approaching the value of one.